Hello, it's Matt and welcome to Collaboration Coach. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up Viva Connections. Now, if you're interested in knowing what Viva Connections does, you can hit the video in the suggested link now and that will tell you all about it. This video is strictly for administrators and it's gonna show you how to actually set it up and configure it so it's ready to use by everybody in your organization. The goal of this video is to set up Viva Connections and we're gonna do that in five steps. The first thing we do is set up the SharePoint home site and we enable the global navigation. So we prepare the SharePoint site ready for adding to the Teams app. The third step is to create the Teams app and we do that by running a script that Microsoft has provided. And then we upload the app into the Teams catalog. Then we distribute the app by pinning it to the left-hand rail in the Teams app. Now there are some prerequisites you're gonna need in order to do all of these things. First of all, is to be at least a SharePoint administrator. You can do it if you're a global administrator as well, obviously. And you're gonna to need to be able to download and install the PowerShell module for SharePoint, so you can run commandlets. And you need to download the Viva Connection Setup script. And I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And finally, you'll need to be able to access the Teams Administration Center and be able to upload apps into the catalog there and configure them too. So step one then is to set up the SharePoint home site. And in order to do that, I've created a site. It's a communication site. I've called it the Commons and it's just a default communication site. You could use a team site if you wanted to. And you can see in the settings menu that I am an owner of this site. And in this tenant, I have the global administrator role. To set the SharePoint home site, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code to run my PowerShell. You can use your favorite IDE, but you must run it as an administrator or have the rights to install the SharePoint PowerShell module once it's running. So once you have it running, you need to do three things. First of all, install the PowerShell module. So you could do that with install PowerShell module with the name microsoft.online.sharepoint.powershell. The next line is connect SPO service. So this connects you to Office 365. So you'll be asked to authenticate when you do that. And you'll log in with the user that has either SharePoint administrator role or global administrator. Once you've connected to the service, you should be able to run the SharePoint PowerShell command line. So you could do something like a get command with SPO because they all start with SPO just to see that they're available. Or you could run something like get SPO site as long as you get a return and it shows you some sites, then you know it's worked okay and you're ready to go. And the last thing you need to do is set the home site. To do that, just grab the URL of the site. In my case, it's from the commons. So just copy that from the address bar. And then in PowerShell, you want to run set dash SPO home site with a parameter of dash home site URL and then paste in that URL and run it. Now, when you do that, it prompts you to confirm it's okay and you just say yes, and now you've set the home site. So now we're on to step two, which is to enable the global navigation. And you do that from the home site that you just configured. I'm gonna go back to my common site here, and now I'm gonna to go to the settings menu, and I should see a global navigation link in that settings menu now. Now, you only see that on the home site. You won't see that anywhere else. Sometimes it takes five or 10 minutes to kick in. So if you don't see it immediately, don't worry. Keep refreshing it, come back to it after five or 10 minutes and it should be there. When the global navigation link is available, you can click on it, which will take you to the settings panel. Then you can toggle on the navigation here and that will enable it. Then you can choose the source of the navigation. And I'm going to choose the home site navigation and then press save. Now what this does is changes the behavior of the home button on the SharePoint app bar. So now when I press on it, I'll see that global navigation pop out on the left hand side. And you can also see that it's using the links from my home site. So things like home documents, pages, and so on. Now that will also be seen in Teams once we've created the app and uploaded it into Teams Admin Center. And the last thing we can do here, and this is an optional step, is to add an icon for the SharePoint app bar that will replace the home button you can see in the top left. 
To do that, just go back into Global Settings, hit the Upload button in the Logo section, go find yourself a icon, preferably a square image file, open the file, save the settings, and you should see that the Home button is replaced with the icon that you set. So now we're on to step three, and we're going to create the app for Viva Connections. In order to do that, you need PowerShell access and you need the Viva Connections setup script, which is available from Microsoft, and I'll leave a link to it in the description. So once you've downloaded that, there's some other prerequisites that you need to consider. Remember what we're doing here is creating a Teams app, and every Teams app needs a bunch of information that it will display in the Teams app catalog. So these things that you see in this list are the things that you need in order to do this properly. Now, I don't recommend you do this in production without a test. So run through a test first so you can get this stuff right. You're going to need a short and a long description, a link to a privacy policy, the company website and a terms of use page. Obviously, the company name and two icons of very specific sizes. They have to be of a certain size. So you may need to speak to someone who manages your images for you. It uses these icons in the Teams app itself and in the app catalog. There's some guidance on how to do that. And I'll put a link in the description that shows you how to prepare the icons. OK, so I'm going to run the Viva Connection script from Visual Studio Code. I'm going to run it without debugging. And the first thing it asks me for is the site URL. So this is the URL of the home site that we created earlier. It asked me to validate, so it wants me to log in just to prove that I have permission to do this. So I need SharePoint Administrator or Global Administrator. Then it asked me how I want the app to be named, and this will appear in the app rail in the Teams app. I'm going to call mine Commons. You need to keep it nice and short, otherwise it won't fit on the rail. I'm going to add a short description, and this is what appears in the catalog. And a longer description also will appear in the catalog. I've got a privacy policy. Now, if you don't have one, you can just hit enter and it will use the Microsoft privacy policy. But I've got a URL to add here to my own one. And the same with the terms. So if you've got a terms page on your website, you can use it here. Otherwise, you can just hit enter and it will use the Microsoft policy. It wants the organization name and then finally the URL of your company site. Now it wants to pick up the icons that it's going to use in the app itself and in the catalog. And I've prepared a couple here. The first one is the bigger one of the two. And then it wants the second one, which is 32 by 32. OK, now it does the configuration and creates a zip file, which it puts in the desktop folder of the user that you're working with. Now, if I go to File Explorer and go to Desktop, here I can see a zip file called Commons, which is the name of the app that I chose. And now that's ready to upload into the Teams app catalog. And now we're on to the fourth step, which is to upload the app to the catalog. To do this, you need access to the Teams Admin Center. And when you're in the Teams Admin Center, you go to Manage Apps. And the first thing you should check is whether Orgwide App Settings has third party apps allowed on. That should be on by default, but just check in case. Then you go to the Upload button, select a file, and then you find the zip file that you created in the previous steps. So in my case, it's called commons.zip. It's on the desktop. Open that. Now, if it uploads correctly, you should see a green bar at the top saying added commons to the list. And also to check it's there, if you just go to the search bar and type the name of your app, you should see it listed there. So that means it's all ready to go and we can configure it and make it available to everybody in the org. So the last step is to distribute the app. And we do that by changing the global setup policy for apps so that everybody sees our new app at the top of the rail in their Teams desktop. To do that, we need to go to the setup policy section of manage apps. And then we need to edit the global policy. We go to the pinned app section and choose add apps. Then we search for the name that we use for our app and we press add. And then we press add again. Now you should see your new app at the bottom of the list and you can select it and move it up to the top using the move up button. 
and then save the policy. You should see a green success banner at the top, meaning that your app should start to show up in people's teams. So the outcome of all that work was that we should now have an app for our company intranet. Now this might not take effect straight away, so you might not see it immediately, but over the next day or so, as people log in and out of Teams, it will appear. And what I have in my tenant here is this app called Commons. And when I press on it, you can see I've got my common site. It's a beautiful communication site. I've got all my news pages and so on. Also, when I press the Commons button again, you can see I've got my organization's global navigation. So this means that I can move between sites and I can see news and so on, all from inside of Teams. Also notice that when I go back to the Commons again, I've got these icons over here that allow me to follow the site and I've got links and I can open it in the browser as well. It's just a really good way of embedding your company's intranet using Fever Connections. Okay, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.